Can you see my screen? Yes, it's perfect. Okay. So thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak during this employer showcase. Um, I'm at the Wind Energy Institute of Canada, and I'm going to start off going through um, who, who we are. So we're located in North Cape, Prince Edward Island, which is on the northwest tip. And we started off really as the Atlantic Wind Test Site in back in 1981. And that was Canada's first um, foray into looking into wind energy and the implications of it in Canada. Um, before that, earlier than that, it was going through Europe. But really, we chose this location because we have a very unique wind regime. Um, we have about 300 degrees of coastal um, exposure. And we also have about eight meters per second at 80 meters um, height, average wind speed, which is fairly high. So with that, through the 80s and 90s, the Atlantic Wind Test Site led this research into wind for Canada. As wind energy expanded across Canada, um, other institutes, of course, have followed and so on. But in 2006, there was a decision to take um, a walk into a different direction. So at that point, we officially opened up as a not-for-profit organization and um, as the Wind Energy Institute. And we're governed by a volunteer board of directors that have both industry ties and academic ties. So as an organization, we can, we collaborate with industry, utilities, system operators, and academia, and industry to advance wind energy in Canada and really the world. Anything we develop in Canada can be applied across the world. And really our mandate is we want to build capacity in the industry. And to do that, we need to understand how the turbines operate and how to operate them better. We need to understand a future power grid that has more renewable energy on it. And through that, we want to build tomorrow's leaders. The people that are working in it now and doing research now will be the people that are the experts in the future. So our um, current infrastructure is we have what we call our research and development park. And in that we have five two megawatt turbines and you can see them in the top um, left. And in that, these are eight 80 meter hub height turbines that have a 92 meter blade diameter. And something that's unique about our turbines is they do have a synchronous generator where most turbines do not, they have uh, an induction based um, generator. So it makes ours fairly unique which is an excellent research tool for us. Through these turbines, we have them fairly heavily instrumentated where we're getting 600 or more um, discrete data points from each turbine, which gives us a wealth of data coming in that we can use to analyze their performance. Also in our wind park, we have an 80 meter met mast where we have various atmospheric sensors that we can use to measure the wind speeds, directions, um, any ice buildup and so on at that Met Tower to help us determine how our wind park is operating and what the turbines are experiencing to go into their operation. In 2021, we also added in uh, a series of solar panels where we've added in a mixture of monofacial and bifacial panels, as well as a storage unit from Tesla. Um, along with that, we partnered with the UPEI um, Climate um, School, and we put up a climate monitoring station where we have a series of instrumentation that will help us monitor what our solar panels are seeing as well as what's gonna be happening with the climate going forward. So what do we do with 
all this coming in. So all told, I said we have about 600 from each of our five turbines. All told, we have about 8,500 data points coming in as fast as some of them are coming in more than one data point per second and some are daily values and so on. But it gives us a large wealth of data coming in. So in this, we can we basically serve as a partnership that we are an independent operator. We have lots of historical ties with the wind industry. So it gives us a well-positioned point where we can work with industry, work with academics, play a bridge between, as well as providing real world data to those academics. Now, the unique thing is the academics are largely structured. They do work with data, they do science, they do research. They have that unique expertise that doesn't exist always in industry. One of the factors that academics run into is getting access to that real world data is if you're working with somebody else, you might get a clean data set that somebody wants you to see that doesn't tell you what the real world data is actually like. So we have that unique ability to provide access to this data that not everybody has access to. In terms of our research, our main focus ourselves is asset management and service life estimation. So that is looking at our wind turbines, how can we make them run more reliably, run better, and potentially um, determine how long they can last and as we operate them. Our second aspect of research is renewable grid integration. So we all know that we have these 2030 and 2050 mandates that currently are legislated in Canada. And as we start to pull current fossil fuels off the grid, we're gonna to have to replace them with renewable energy. And that renewable energy is very modern now compared to existing um, power grid, power systems. So understanding how these will affect the current power grid and how we have to design the power grid for the future to be able to take this influx of renewables and expand upon what the current power grid is. Because as if you bring a whole bunch of electric vehicles on, we're gonna need an expanded power grid. If you change how um, heating is done, it's usually going to be electricity. Manufacturing, you may take combustion processes out, add electricity into it. All those are going to cause the grid to expand. In terms of our asset management, we need to examine all the factors. So we know we have a changing climate. How is that going to affect turbine operation. We seem to have more extreme events, either extreme windstorms or extreme cold. What's the impact going to have on a wind turbine or a wind farm with these activities? So we have, like I said, we have about um, getting onto 40-ish some odd years of data that we can go back to and examine how the climate has changed here at North Cape as well as we have about 13 years of operation of our wind park that we can gauge how the turbines have performed over that and going forward. Currently, we have several collaborations that we're working with in industry. One is with ExxonMobil, where we're testing um, new lubrications for turbines. One is with um, B&K Vibro, where we have a condition monitoring system set up across our turbines. And we use that to monitor how the drivetrain performs. Is there anything potentially wearing in it that we need to know how to replace? And thirdly, we're working with Polytech, which is a leading edge protection for our turbine blades. In terms of grid integration with the addition of our solar pad panels and batteries, we have more renewables that we're bringing onto the grid and we can explore how those um, impact the grid and how we could potentially use them to provide grid support that 
traditionally would be provided by a fossil fuel generating plant. Um, Robbie, just to yes. let you know that we have about uh, 30 seconds after you. Okay. I just going to go to the next slide. So I just wanted to finish off showing what our current team looks like. Um, we have a CEO that governs us. Then we have an academic route, which I fall into, that's governed by our scientific director, Marianne Rogers. Uh, we have an operations side that maintains our wind park, and we currently have an open uh, manager of operations um, and director of engineering. And then we have our administration side that looks after all our day-to-day -day activities. And just wanted to thank you. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll gladly take them. Thank you very much, Robbie. Uh, we do have a question on the chat. Um, so uh, students are interested, for students that are interested in this field, um, do entry-level positions become available at the Wind and Energy Institute or positions mainly geared towards more senior profiles? We go through, we have a wide range of positions. So currently we have um, two interns that are working with us. One has completed a master's of engineering and the other one has completed a bachelor's of physics. But we've had, um, during this past summer, we had four summer students through various degrees of their undergraduate program that worked with us. So um, we go through the wide range and we've had people who've finished first year and we've had people who've completed their four-year degree but haven't graduated yet before they started with us.